Tuesday morning. Good morning. Did you get rained on last night? I got three inches of rain. Three inches of rain. And hail. We didn't see that. Nope. We didn't see hail up here. Um, I, had my, I had a picnic. I was going to do an outdoor, socially distanced kind of baseball thing last night. It got rained out, so it went to Zoom instead, <laughs> which is not Another the same. Zoom meeting. Not the same. Not the same. Well, a lot going on. We have our classes that we're working on right now. I, you have your uh, Bible Tells Me So yep. class. People are still welcome to jump in on that. Let Absolutely. John know if you want to do that. Uh, my class has not yet started. That'll start next Tuesday. So you still have time to so get you still your book. Have time to get the book and get in on the book study that I am doing. All the details are in the bulletin, uh, which you can get online uh, about both of those classes. Uh, if you have questions, contact either one of us. We're ha happy to get you connected. Squared away. Yeah, yeah. I, I had somebody today just register for it. So there are still people coming in for it. So. Yeah, and then since it is summer, summer our yes. summer service is still happening a little bit differently than normal years. But uh, for July, our summer service project is Eagles. This is a nonprofit that was brought to our attention by Liz Freeberger. Uh, her friend Catherine is the... The executive director and she is working with students in the Dominican Republic to get these kids who've never actually gone to public school up to speed so they can go into the grade that their age would uh, require them to be in so she's using art and you know math skills reading skills writing skills uh, it's faith-based uh, and really is just doing wonderful things for these kids yeah. and for us uh, we're helping these kids uh, continue in this program by uh, taking in school supplies. So there's a an email that was sent out. There's a sign up uh, for you to donate. You know, book, uh, notebooks, folders, pencils, erasers, a couple other things. And uh, we're inviting you to bring them to the church. There are two labeled Rubbermaid tubs out in the back of the church, uh, past where uh, the roundabout is. Uh, so if you take the roundabout and come a little bit back towards the church, you'll see them clearly. Uh, so we'd invite you to help us uh, continue in this support of a really wonderful nonprofit. Yeah, EGLE stands for, I think, Education, Art, God, Love, Service. Can't remember what the other E is. Did I get them all? We're missing an E. Missing an E. Maybe I missed an E in there. So anyway, but uh, that that gives you an, an idea of uh, enrichment. Yeah, enrichment. Enrichment um, gives you a little idea of what they're focusing on uh, there. So yeah, any way you can help. So John and I wanted to go back to the gospel that we worked on yesterday because, as we mentioned yesterday, there was actually a section in that gospel lesson missing, and it it always bugs us. I don't know if it bugs you, but it bugs us. Whenever we're working on a text and whoever puts together the readings for a Sunday that we're that we kind of take up the mantle of, um, when they leave out a section, it always makes us go, "Why? Why'd they take this out?" We're going to show you and, why they took it out today. And, and usually, what's in what's in the middle of the sandwich, as I call it, is really almost the thing you want to preach on. It's interesting because it's it's kind of shirks the. Th theme of the readings yeah, of the day. It can, it can be, usually it's harsh and it distracts people. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know that I personally ever necessarily want to preach on it, but I think it, it distracts too much from the reading. Uh, other times you'll see like when Jesus is teaching parables, you know, while he was at the dinner, Jesus sat down and taught them saying, then there will be a gap because that story we read last week. Mm-hmm. So we'll skip to the next one. So it's just another story from the same scene. Yeah. So they'll do it like that. But I think sometimes it's just very distracting. And, but this is a case where John is right. John and I were reading through this part that got omitted. And we were like, gosh, that's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> that actually could have contributed a little bit to a sermon. Yeah, I think it's it. the context of, of what's in the middle, I think, frames what comes before and what comes after. So but it is distracting. Yeah, we're gonna read. But we're gonna, re but we're gonna read it anyway. So we're gonna be doing. Uh, and you notice I have my my real Bible, my paper Bible, which is you know really John very very old. <laughs> well loved. It's well loved. Um, instead of using my tablet because I need to read the uh, section that is not omitted. So we're gonna be in Matthew eleven, and we're gonna start with verse sixteen, and we're gonna go all the way through verse thirty. All right. So here we go. But and this is Jesus talking. But to what will I compare this generation? 
It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Then he began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? <laughs> no, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, of all places, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and you have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal to him, to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So you see why that middle section gets really, you know, kind of left out and why it's so distracting. Um, John, what they're, what Jesus is basically saying in that is he's looking at Chorazin, and I'm not as familiar with Chorazin. We know, um, we know Bethsaida. We've heard about it before. Yeah, Chorazin, Bethsaida we know. Eh. Bethsaida um, is absolutely, um, well, now here it is in my notes, Chorazin and Bethsaida were Jewish were Galilean Jewish towns. So I knew that Bethsaida was Jewish, but I didn't know that Chorazin was. Um, so Jesus is looking at them and saying, you, Jewish people, if, if these deeds of power had been done in Tyre or Sidon, which are They're not, Gentile which cities. are Gentile lands, they would have repented. They would have worn sackcloth and put on ashes. And, uh, you know, they would have absolutely repented of their deeds. But you, you have no interest in this. Same thing with Tyre and uh, Tyre and Sidon, uh, or Capernaum. Same way, um, it's also a, a Jewish land by the sea. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Will you be exalted to heaven? <laughs> no, you'll be brought down to Hades, because it would be more tolerable in Sodom. And if you go all the way back to Genesis." And Sodom and Gomorrah doesn't really end well. Yeah, it it's doesn't. A real good it, experience. It doesn't end well in Sodom. So, um, so you know, it, it's interesting because again, as we talked about yesterday, John, the people who should know better don't, and the people who shouldn't know any better get it, and so we get that kind of theme. Um, wisdom will be vindicated by her deeds. Um, People never being satisfied yeah. by what they're getting. But you had an interesting thought kind of taking off of that about why then this famous verse afterwards. I, I don't know if you had something else you wanted to say first about it, but... No, you don't. You don't. No, no, no. You had something that... You had a connection that you had done for your research for the later part. Taking yeah, that and it's almost... So, I obviously didn't preach on this text. Right, uh, right. I struggled to... Decide where I wanted to go this week, and I ended up going with, with Zechariah, with our Old Testament reading. And the thing that I, I was struck by this reading is the end, um, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. That's more often than not used at funerals. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick and I, I think both have either preached on that verse or you know used it as part of the committal prayers. And one of the commentators I was I was listening to was saying, you know what, maybe we don't necessarily use this the way we should. And if we look at kind of the top portion, and we look at the, after having read the middle portion, it's not so much a description of, you know, 
eternal life of, yeah, of where life, we're yeah. going or you know it's not like jesus is saying you know come to the timeshare that i'm now you know opening up for you jewish people and get some rest and recoup from the busyness of the world it's almost uh, it's really a conversation about discipleship where jesus has that phrase that we skip over a lot in this text learn from me jesus is saying you know come to me you'll find rest because what i'm doing and what i'm trying to instill in you which you you pharisees you scribes you learned people aren't understanding is i'm putting forward this new way of living and it's so much less complicated so much less burdened by law and rules and it's going to feel restful and the, the yoke that you've carried as a nation following you know you know all of these laws and in, in numbers and deuteronomy you can just kind of wave by to them and if you like we talked about yesterday mm -hmm. you know the you know greatest commandment is love your god with all your heart your mind and soul and the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself mm -hmm. you know if that's the way of life that I'm inviting you into, you're going to feel restful. The yoke is going to be easy. The burden is going to be light compared to, you know, how do I arrange my dinner plate so that this doesn't touch this? Um, and I think bringing in kind of the middle piece, you know, Gentiles obviously could get behind that because they don't have the background of kosher law that Jewish people do. They would say, oh, so I'm supposed to love God and love my neighbor. And you're doing all these incredible signs. Oh, great. There's nothing that gets in the way of them mm -hmm. seeing Jesus for who he is and hearing the message for what it is. They jump at it. Yeah. But but the law gets in the way of you know, the people who should know what's taking place and, and who Jesus is. It just butts up against this new way of doing things. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder, I think that is as true in the world, John, as it is in churches. Um, you know, St. Philip's has a, a, a fairly healthy culture of trying new things yeah, and doing new absolutely. things. And that's very, very helpful. But there are times when... Things are, have for a while been going a certain way. And when you try to shift those things or shift even people's thinking about certain things, like if we were to say this issue maybe isn't as big a deal as we thought it was. Um, and maybe that might have been, you know, what happened with homosexuality yeah. back in 2009. Um, the ability to shift and say, all right, maybe how do we understand this in a different way? You know what I mean? As church, um, as people of faith, I think that can wipe people out. I think it can wipe people out. People in the world who have no Christian faith at all, no, no sense of love God, love your neighbor, can get behind it faster than church people yeah. do because they get so caught up in this obscure law from way back in Leviticus, one law, right? Yeah. Back there. Um, and they can't shift on it. And that's true not only for that issue, but for many, many things in our faith. Um, I think it's also true in the world. Yeah. That, that I think we surround ourselves with the world that we know and the world that we've gotten comfortable with. And it's hard when I think something new comes along and we're being invited to look at things in a different way. And whether it's it could be anything. It could be even just this time of COVID and being able to look at the world from behind a mask and to not be crushingly anxious about it. Yeah. But instead to be able 
to say, I'll wear the mask because the best knowledge that we have at this moment, and God knows the, the knowledge has changed oh, yeah. over these months. Absolutely. But the best knowledge that we have is that if we do it this way, we'll take care of ourselves and one another. And then to maybe take the yoke of Christ upon us so that the yoke of COVID isn't crushing us. I think that's hard for people. I, I do. Yeah. I, 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 the number of people that I've talked to right, in the congregation, at my pool, baseball team, wherever it is, um, there's a huge weight from COVID. And Jesus, as you said, isn't giving us an invitation for the end of our lives, but maybe is giving us an invitation for today. Yeah, I think the, the best, I think there's a lot we could do with that. Um, and I remember some, sometimes Facebook actually does have some wisdom to it every now and again. And It's few and far between, but go ahead. I remember <laughs> one of our members posting it was a, a picture, and it was just a picture of somebody wearing a mask, and it said, I don't wear the mask for me, I wear it for you. And to me, that just struck me so much of what all of this is about, of where where life and faith intersect a little bit. And, and I think it's interesting, too, and this might just be where my mind is going with this whole Peter Enns conversation. And I, he talks about sometimes the Bible gets in the way of itself. This is your book study. Yeah, yeah. where we were talking about, you know, the the story of the the Israelites coming into the promised land and and, and the their battle with the Canaanites. And you know, maybe that's not exactly the way that it happened. And maybe Jesus is saying to this and you know, as a Jewish person, as a teacher, as a scholar you know, maybe scripture does get in the way of itself. So. And here I'm giving you something that is truly authentically rooted in scripture and rooted in law and rooted in love of God. But the stuff that you've heard before, you know, maybe take that with a little bit of a grain of salt too. Because mm -hmm. you can still be authentically faithful, but present it differently. Like for our congregation... The way we're doing communion is never the way I thought I would ever celebrate it. Me either, trust me. But, you know, Jesus says, this is. And being able to do it the way we're doing it fully lives into that phrase. Mm -hmm. and, and lives into the intention of why we do it. We yeah. do it together. Yeah. And, I mean, I Google search something I never thought. You know, prepackaged communion kit. Never in my wildest dreams right. did I think, but that's a radical shift for us. Right. Of, but it allows us to be church and mm -hmm. allows us to praise God and you know love the community that we have here yeah. and stand together, you know, graced and free. Well, I like that because I think you know you're you're talking about not letting the Bible get in the way of itself. Not letting traditions, mores, principles, even things you ever thought. Because, again, you know, I, I confess part of the reason why I haven't jumped on the video bandwagon for worship and everything is because I like it when people gather. And, and there's just something that is, okay, it's, it's good. We were talking today in our staff meeting that... The live stream, sometimes you, you feel like you're kind of there yeah. because it's live and you're watching people walk around and everything. Um, but it's still not the same for me because I know that my heart misses so many people. Mm, absolutely. But this is where we are right now. And so this is what we'll do to take care of one another right now. And to remember, Jesus did not have a bundle of laws for us when he came. It was love God and love one another. And that was what he commanded us. And after that, you know, fine, it's it's back there. It's part of 
history. It's good to know because it informs where we've come to. But, you know, kind of rooting yourself in Old Testament faith kind of ignores Jesus a little bit. And you end up being Pharisaic, like we talked about we yesterday. Talked about and yesterday. that only... And I think burden, too. You're burdened by all this because all of this gets in the way of your relationships with other people. It gets in the way with just being free to love one another. Yeah, and that's hard enough. Someday. Right, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Why don't I pray us out? You guys can get on with your day. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Gracious Lord God, sometimes we get in our own way. Sometimes we get in your way. Help us to see where the light of your grace breaks in. Breaks in on us and shines into the dark places where we'd rather not have you look into and the places we'd rather not change because well, we've rooted ourselves there so long it gets comfortable. Help us to be open to new places of loving, new places of learning, new places of understanding, and maybe even new places where we might discover you and be surprised. Bless us and keep us this day, Lord. Fill us with grace and joy and a sense that the yoke that we carry today is yours. And so it is gentle and it is light because it is rooted in your love for us and you calling us to love the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Take care.